Hello everyone and welcome back. Come take a dive with me into the Croatian waters and see the amazing wildlife that's underneath the surface. The Croatian waters are voted as some of the best places to go snorkeling, especially in Europe. Despite this, there are a few things that you may need to watch out for. The first of these is the scorpion fish. There are a few different species in the Aegean Sea. This one here is a black scorpion fish. They camouflage very well, however they are quite rare and you shouldn't really worry about them. The one thing that isn't rare is urchins. There are a ton of urchins. These are generally quite easy to spot as they are black and stand out from the light coloured sands. But just watch yourself because they're very spiny and if you stand on one then your holiday could be affected. Once we've got the first precautions out as well as swimming safely, there are a ton of different fish in the Aegean Sea. It is amazing. There's so many fish here and just snorkelling around I was having the best time. I was having to keep myself on a timer because the first day I spent 4 hours in the water. Most of these videos are filmed around the dock, which was part of the hotel. This was really good because many small fish were attracted to this area because it provided them shelter, such as the large shoal of mullet and sardines which are seen here. However, on one of our day trips we went to a blue lagoon and made a discovery which is what our next clip is. Now let's talk about my second favourite marine animal of this video, the cuttlefish. This member of the cephalopod family can actually change its colour and its texture. I would never have expected to see one in real life and especially to have spotted one because they're so hard to see. Fortunately this one wasn't in the mood for hiding. You can see how this cuttlefish swims by undulating its outside fin. This not only gives the cuttlefish the ability to turn on the spot but also to move in any direction that it wants to. Other members of the cephalopod family, such as squid, use jets in their mantle to squirt water out of for movement, however this is only backwards. If you may have already seen, the cuttlefish actually starts changing its colour when it goes up to the rock. It keeps a nice shade of brown when going towards the rock and on the sand it keeps the same colour as the sand. The interesting thing is about their camouflage is that they actually camouflage to what's directly below them rather than what the mollusk can actually see. Cuttlefish have excellent vision and also have been proven to be very smart. If you live in an area that may have cuttlefish, if they have died and washed up on shore, you may see the cuttlefish bone, which is an oval shape, washed up on the shore. They use this to help control their buoyancy. Whilst we're on the topic of cephalopods, let's look at my favourite invertebrate that I saw from this trip. Not only did I see one octopus, but I saw two on this trip. I was so excited that I almost drowned myself trying to get a video of it. I completely did not expect to see the cuttlefish in the first place and then an octopus. The first octopus that I saw was around a small little old town next to Havar, which is a very well known Croatian town. This octopus was probably around 30 centimetres or a foot in diameter and it completely threw me off guard seeing it walk across the bottom. Whereas the second one was maybe only 15 centimetres across. Like the cuttlefish, octopus can also change their texture and colour. Not only are octopus one of the most intelligent creatures, they also have an amazing ability to be able to squeeze through tight holes. The only limiting factor for the size of the hole they can squeeze through is their beak, which is the only hard part of their body. This resembles that of a bird, and if you actually look online, you can see massive octopuses on fishing boats squeezing through holes only a couple centimetres across. The next fish in the spotlight is what I believe is a type of mullet. It was quite an unusual fish and was a bottom feeder and as you can see in some of the videos would sift through the sand a lot and other fish would follow it and eat the debris. To assist with its rummaging it had these weird white little whiskers that it could pop out of its mouth at will. From one bottom dwelling fish to another, the next fish is a sole. These are basically just your bug standard flatfish, and they came in many different colours. 
Now, a classic European fish, the flathead grey mullet. These are really common fish and just eat absolute muck all the time. But what I'm actually highlighting in this clip is how weird the coastline was. I'm not sure whether this is a type of coral or a macroalgae or anything, but these shellfish looking outcrops were absolutely covering the rocks and I have no idea what they are. Despite me not getting any footage, there were quite a few tentacle blennies as well as these Mediterranean bloodies here. They were very well camouflaged, but personally I really liked the look of them and I went out my way to try and find as many as I could. Here's one relaxing with a sea urchin and a sea cucumber. The hotel supplied us with paddle boards and kayaks to have a nice day out with, so one day we decided to explore the whole of the bay. There were many fishermen who put traps out overnight, and I checked a few of these, and upon checking one of them, I actually found a moray eel inside. Now I'm not sure whether there's two inside, but there is definitely a brown moray eel that was around 60 centimeters to a meter long, with some weird orange spots on it. I'm not sure whether you'll be able to see it, but if you pause the video, you may be able to see in the last clip that it actually shows its jaws at me. This is the Salima porgy and was actually eaten by the Romans to give them hallucinogenic effects. These fish are actually the ones with the golden stripes down their body and there are a lot of them always eating stuff from the bottom in large shoals. As I've not tried the hallucinogenic effects myself, I probably wouldn't suggest that, despite it being served in some restaurants. There were a few unusual things that I actually saw on this holiday, the first of which was this annular sea bream here with a parasite on its side which seemed to affect its swimming. I couldn't actually tell what it was, but it was definitely a separate organism to the fish. Upon looking at some research papers online, I'd guess that it's probably a marine isopod. The rocks themselves were full of life as well, with a lot of barnacles, urchins, and especially in this video, hermit crabs. Normally with hermit crabs you can tell what the shell has come from, however I wasn't really sure about these shells, and they were all seeming to be around similar size and colours, which was actually quite odd because if you find hermit crabs in the UK, they will differ greatly in both colour and size of the shell. The level of fish activity in the water was absolutely crazy. I was actually half expecting to see some sort of predator come up and eat some of these smaller fish because there were so many of them in one spot at the same time. With what might be me being unknowingly lucky, no large predators actually showed up to eat the fish. And if you're wondering, the Aegean actually has one of the lowest rates of shark attacks due to its relatively high salinity and low amounts of free fish for the sharks to eat. I think when I looked at the statistics, it was around 10 to 20 times more likely for you to get attacked by a shark in Australia than it was for you to be attacked in the Aegean. I'm not sure what this invertebrate is here. I was initially thinking that it could have been a starfish Fish, but I'm guessing it might be a type of worm. Most of the fish here look like different species of comas. If you didn't already see it, check out the blue tail on the first fish, which massively contrasts the camouflaged look seen in the others. There's a few wrasse dotted about in here as well. This fish here is the painted coma and actually changes its colours all the way through its life, and when it gets to an adult, it has a very red face which is completely different to the yellow colour here. There's also this rainbow Mediterranean sea wrasse. This fish did not want me standing in its territory at all. So I obliged and swam off quickly after this video. There were many different species of fish that were very varied in appearance. The striped sargo here was very different to that of the chromis chromis seen here as well. Large schools of these fish would accumulate around man-made objects, and especially around this boy here, it was almost like a man-made reef. But they seemed just as happy to swim in the open sea. I feel like wherever we went, we couldn't get away from the annular sea brims. They were always investigating us and swimming around us in a little circular pattern. Overall, I would suggest snorkeling in Croatia to almost everyone. Obviously, I'm a bit biased because I'm absolutely obsessed with stuff like this, but it was amazing and I would love to go again. 
The water was super clear and there was tons of marine life for you to constantly watch. There's a few more bits of marine life later on in the video, but for now I'm going to show you about our trips. We decided to get an island hopping tour from CU, which was focused around the Blue Cave. This also included other locations such as the filming set for Mamma Mia 2, Steneva Bay which is voted the most picturesque bay in Europe, a Blue Lagoon and also some other islands. For the Blue Cave, it was on its own island that had lots of lizards on, which you'll see in a second. The entrance to the cave was tiny and we had to crouch in the boat so then we didn't hit our heads on the way in. Once inside, you could see the reflection of the light from outside on the white sand underneath the cave. This gave the cave its blue appearance and it was super cool. This is us entering the cave. The tour guides were lovely and had loads of information about the place. They even told us about how the original entrance used to be a swimming entrance and then they blew it up with dynamite to make a hole for boats. I'll be quiet for a second for you to appreciate this cave. The locations that we stopped at were absolutely amazing. All the towns were really interesting and had great food. Along the way, we looked at the rocky cliffs as well. That's it for me talking about little trips. Now back onto the marine life. This was recorded over a harbour wall. As you can see, there are some shrimp in this little water pool. These are the same shrimp as you'll find in the UK. However, this crab is not. This is actually a marbled rock crab, which I'm pretty sure we don't get in the UK. Here's one of the little lizards that I found on holiday. This one was quite happy for me to record him whilst he was basking in the sun. Anyway, we're at the end of the video now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed it and I hope to bring you more holiday content at some point. I'd love to hear any feedback you had in the comments and I'll reply to you all. Thanks, have a good day.